Hello there. Top of the bill on Saturday Fight Night this week. The young man who could shake up the established order in the featherweight division. There are some big names circling each other at present, waiting for the chance to meet, as long as the money's right. But this is the young man who could spring a surprise on all of them. It's Richard Evert, the Coventry youngster they call the Tiger. He is on the way up, and he's already lined up a British title eliminator. Tonight, Ever tries to win an intercontinental title to push his name forward beyond these shores. Against him, the durable South African, Muzakisi Oliphant, he's emerged from some tough competition on the home circuit. Gentlemen, this is the main event of this evening, sponsored by the Albany Conference and Banqueting at the 40 Post House, Glasgow City. Your matchmaker is Mr. Tommy Gilmer, Jr. And I'll introduce to you the IBO officials for this evening. The supervisor is Mr. Gerard Paxton Willard of Glasgow. Your judges are Mr. John Coyle of Wolverhampton, Mr. Richard Davies of London. Your referee is Mr. Paul Thomas of Derby. Your timekeeper, Mr. Jim Russell of Glasgow. Your British Boxing Board Control Steward in Charge is Dr. David Sanderson of East Kilbride. Gentlemen, this contest is for a vacant IBO Intercontinental Featherweight Championship at nine stones over 12 three minute rounds. And can I introduce you in the red corner, gentlemen, we please welcome from Port Elizabeth, South Africa, the Eastern Province Champion, Sukisi Oliphant. <laughs> And gentlemen, could I ask you to please welcome from Coventry the undefeated Richard Tiger Evans. <laughs> gentlemen, at the way today, four spots are scaled, eight stone, 13 pounds. Gentlemen, 12 three minute rounds. Referee is Paul Thomas, and how good is this Richard Evert? from Barry Hearn's matchroom camp. There's a lot of hopes pinned on him. Can he shake up the ever-growing plot in the domestic featherweight division? And of course, I suppose one day, he, like everybody else, he's dreaming of fighting Prince Nassim Hamid. This might be quite an interesting assignment, though, against Zukisi Oliphant from Port Elizabeth in South Africa, who has the reputation of being pretty tough and resilient, although he has been stopped a couple of times. You can't really miss Evert with his tiger skin style trunks and indeed hairstyle. That's quite something, isn't it? It really is. He's quite a, a focused young man. He's gone along very well, quite a, a puncher. Has 10 kill wins in his 12 fights, so he's gone along very good. And I think he's, you know, he's talking very big already, talking about world title fights. Good right hand from him there. He's an exciting pressure fighter, Evert. Oliphant covering up pretty well. Paul Thomas not happy about something. I think the gum shield may have come out already for the South African. It looks a, a rather ill-fitting one, doesn't it, as well? Well, Oliphant looks to be fighting the, the wrong sort of fight. He looks tall and rangy, but he's crouching down very low, so he's losing that, that height advantage. And he's, he's coming in and he's trying to take the fight, certainly stand with Evert, and I think that's a, the wrong game plan. It's just a nice, sensible test, this, for Evert at this stage of his career. Had a good win over Rudy Valentino, now a veteran. Uh, Everett was conceding weight to Valentino, who's really a lightweight. But 
people are just beginning to talk about him and uh, I wonder if we're just in here on the start of a story certainly getting in with some pretty good headshots in this round that's just a slip really for Everett who looks as if he might have just sustained a bit of damage yes but did you see the way Oliphant reacted there he was certainly hurt by the left hook and looked to grab even even when the referee wasn't around him he still rushed in and looked to grab Everett pouring really with the jab those are the shots he likes those meaty ones to the head and again that seemed to just momentarily rock Oliphant the right hand from Everett yes, Everett's prepared to stand in close he's he's having to take one or two punches the, his defense is a little bit lax doesn't move his head much but he's he's just looking to get his own shots on Everett, who says he used to be something of a tear away in his youth. He said, I've given a few people nightmares. I've been a bit of a nutcase, but nothing too stupid. And he says he's quietened down these days. Try telling Oliphant that. Don't know what they're paying Richard Everett for this fight, but he may need all of it to uh, pay off his hairdresser. Seconds out. Round two. Freddie King working the corner as usual with the matchroom fighters for Coventry's Richard Everett, who calls himself the Tiger and certainly carries the theme into the ring with him. Only two people have gone the distance so far with Everett, both of them very durable knowing veteran pros Miguel Matthews and Peter Buckley Everett's never been more than six rounds this is due to go 12 so stamina might become a factor if he can't get rid of Oliphant say before the halfway stage I think Everett just needs to work on defense he's very good as an attacking fighter but his defense is somewhat open and I think as he moves up in class he's got to watch that because any fighter that that stands in close as he does is always open to counters more coming from Oliphant in this round he was good enough in South Africa to fight for the South African title losing to Andrew Matabola who we saw in this country against Steve Robinson on a night where Robinson really rediscovered himself and stopped the South African well, that fellow stopped this man Oliphant so that's a little bit of a form guide for you well, Oliphant's trying harder in this round trying to establish his jab again he's he's standing in close he's prepared to to trade with Everett but he's just looking for the bigger punch now elephant getting in with a couple of right hands you're right about Everett. his defense looks leaky doesn't he at this stage of his career it's obviously something they need to work on with him yes I think he needs to, to work on loosening up and just more head movement little roll of the shoulders now that. that's just all that's lacking from him as he moves up in class it will get harder he'll get in with faster and better opponents dinner jacketed crowd watching on absorbed by this just wondering how good this featherweight prospect ever is well elephant's much busier he's had some success in this round with the overhand right that's a punch that elephant has to look out for South African looking very square on he's having his successes in this second round this has been much busier he's managed managing well to push Evett back and that's a good round for Oliphant just like to see 
Richard Everett snap out that jab a little more. He just tends to sort of reach with it, really, doesn't he? Yes, he just he just pushes it out. There's no real snap and aggression with it. That was a better one, the the, the last one in the, the series there. And they're a good punch, the left and the right over Second the top. Out. Clearly has some Three. power. Third round, for which Oliphant uh, he's very reluctant to join in the action. At last, they've uh, they've got him out there. He's had a break of about 80 seconds, I'd say. Now, not the 60. The right hand has worked well for Everett tonight. I think he lost his gum shield again in that exchange, Oliphant. Not for the first time. Just a question of how soon Paul Thomas, the referee, steps in to separate them. He'll wait for a lull before letting uh, Oliphant have his gum shield back. There is that lull. So now it'll have a little wash. And I think, <laughs> I think Paul Thomas is beginning to suspect that Oliphant maybe just spitting it out to buy himself a little bit of time. That's an old pro's trick, isn't it? Yes, it is, but I would I can't say that the point really of him doing it at that time because he'd had a, a good round in the second and he's trying to put a, a bit of pressure on Everett. I think it really could be the case of an ill-fitting gum shield and it's very important to have a, a good fit because when they, when they start to come out, it's very difficult to keep them in. He's obviously got a problem with that. Seems to be punching with the inside of the glove a bit as well, the South African, not all the time. He's only got four knockout wins in 15 fights. Yes, I think he, he looks to lack a, a big punch, but he is working well to the body, and he does have success with the right hand over the top, a punch that ever does seem to be open for. as he did early on because it's one of these things with young prospects with a lot of stoppage wins early on in their career that they almost expect it to happen and then when somebody gives them a bit of an argument it's a mental test for them yes you're right and often a, a problem with punches they just forget they forget how to lead up to get the punch they just think every time they they hit somebody they're gonna fall and that's not the case they've got to work in and You'll get the punches going, the combination going, and you'll find the openings. And that's what Everett isn't doing here. He just looks as if he's he's looking or waiting for a big punch. He's not getting his jab going, and he's not finding his rhythm. Everett actually fought a South African in his last fight, and it took him only 94 seconds to conclude that argument. Oliphant is more resilient, and has clearly come here with ambition of his own, and getting in here with a couple of good left hooks. Well, at this point, he's stopping Everett working. He's pushing Everett on the back foot. Everett needs to you know, get his balance. He's not able to do that. Made to miss with that right hand. It's such a congested world to get a break in now, the featherweights as well in Britain with uh, Prince Nassim Hamid, of course, leading the way. You've got Billy Hardy, European champion, Paul Ingle, Commonwealth Almost champion, Duke McKenzie, Steve Robinson, of course, who's Second coming out. John Round Joe Irwin, four. Dean Pithy, Paul Griffin, those two due to meet at the end of March. And those are just some of the characters involved in the plot. And this fellow looking to join them, Richard Everett, on the right of your picture as you look at them. But the South African growing in confidence. Yes, he is. He's he's working more. He's got a better work rate than Everett. Everett just hasn't really found his rhythm. Needs to start getting his jab working and putting his combinations together. That's really what's been lacking from his work. Everett was an 
ABA bantamweight champion in his amateur days back in 1993. He won a junior ABA title as well, a couple of boys club championships. But his style is certainly more suited, I'd say, to the pros, wouldn't you? Yes, I think much more suited. He's, you know, he's a rough type of character and a rough type of fighter. He's not afraid to have to, to take a couple of shots to get his own on. But I think as he moves up in class, he's got to avoid taking the punch. He's got to improve his defense. Scott Ragged at this stage, Everett. Oliphant, for the moment, getting an easier ride than he may have suspected from the early exchanges when he was caught with some very solid-looking shots to the head. And they're just trying to pick it up, trying to push Oliphant on the back foot now, using his jab and looking to get more power. You see him setting himself there, looking for heavy shots. And that's when he, that's when he can get caught. Just not the required accuracy at the moment from Everett. Has that gum shield come out again? I think it might have done, you know. Well, you, you heard that. Paul Summer says if it comes out again, I'm going to deduct a point. which is unfortunate for poor old Oliphant if it is purely accidental every time and it is an ill-fitting gum shield. On the other hand, if he's spitting it out, that's a different question again. Well, it's often a problem because boxers tend to lose their gum shields when they have, obviously, their mouth open, but they, they jaw apart. So, you know, that's when you can get bad damage to the jaw as well, when, you're, when your mouth's wide open. And he does tend to do that. Good body shot that time from Everett. Pick that punch well, and that. This is better from him. Yes, he's starting to look strong, getting on top now, looking to land hurtful punches. Bit more rhythm in his work. Second out, round five. Fifth round. Always a rather strange atmosphere, I should imagine. You must have fought in this kind of uh, arena with a dinner-jacketed crowd and people quaffing back wine. It always seems a little incongruous to me. What do you think, Glenn? Yes, it's it's often difficult to, to really perform because you're like a, a big crowd and the atmosphere of a fight you know, really gets you going and they become part of it. But it's, it's a little different in a dinner atmosphere. and It's often harder to really perform and get your rhythm. So let's see if Everett can build on that better round he had in the fourth in this round five. And can Oliphant keep his gum shield in? Well, Everett's really going to look to try and take charge from this point. The last was a good one for Everett. Now he needs to keep control. And he's complaining about a low blow here, the South African. The referee is having nothing to do with that. I think he's... Um, I think he thinks Oliphant's playing the old soldier a bit here. Yes, I, I think he is, really. I think there are maybe a few distress signals starting to come in from Oliphant. He was quick to grab there, and he didn't really want to let go at all. So maybe he's just starting to get hurt. I think ever starting to get to him much more. his gloves pretty low, doesn't he? Yes, certainly the, the left is, is very low. And Oliphant in the early rounds was quick to catch him with all the hand rights. That was a low blow, that left hand that time. From Everett. This time, Oliphant chose to make little of it. We 
largely in reverse gear now. Zakuzi Oliphant. I think the gun shield might have come out again there. That was a, a big left hook, and again, look, he grabs him, doesn't want to let go. And I think the gum shield again is out, and this could be a, a point lost for Oliphant. Well, Paul Thomas did warn him that he was going to deduct a point, and now he's having a word with the corner men about it. Anyone got any super glue? Not exactly clear whether he deducted the point. There was no indication of that. Of course, there is a new rule that we're going to have in domestic boxing starting in March, where the referees will make a very visible point deduction. We certainly didn't see it there. No, there was nothing to let you believe that Paul Thomas had deducted the point. It seems to have just spurred Oliphant on again for a moment. He was beginning to retreat into his shell and look pretty tentative. <laughs> Everett was also complaining about something else on that far side there. I don't know whether uh, Oliphant just bared his teeth or something in that exchange. It was something a bit odd. It wasn't exactly clear. Here's round six. If it looks as if he's got some power, but there are plenty of things perhaps for him to work on before they should be thinking of pitching him in with the leading contenders in the featherweight division in Britain, wouldn't you think? Yes, definitely. I think they just need to, to take their time. There's still a, a lot to polish up on Richard Ever. That was a good right hand. He's, he's got power, he puts his punches together, but just needs to, to tighten up the defence and get more rhythm. One or two Everett supporters in the crowd who've made the journey up from Coventry. Bit of a fight revival going on in that city, and he's struggling with the gum shield again, Oliphant, who's fumbling to put it back in. Yes, that's giving Oliphant big problems, the gum shield. And he's got one or two of them in there at the moment. That's a good little burst from the young man from Coventry. Oliphant planting his feet now, he's looking to, to bring power into these punches. The overhand right really loading up with that one. That's a better jab from Everett. There's some snap, had a ramrod quality. Did the gum shield come out again there? Something flew across the ring, I think it did, you know. Yes, I think he's, he's lost it. Again, having real problems with that. And it is getting farcical. Just at a time when Everett is beginning to fight with more economy, just picking the punches a little better. And now, oh, he's complained about something. I don't know if he felt he was bitten there. There's a point deduction here, and I think that was for a bite by Oliphant. I don't think that is for... The repeated problems with the gum shield, despite the fact that he's had warnings about that, there, there was something which Everett recoiled, almost Holyfield like, away from Oliphant and uh, came out with an expletive. Yes, that was a, a bite. The gum shield had been dislodged a little earlier, and I think in that, when he got close, that's panic signals coming in from Oliphant. He got close, and there was a bite there, and I think just trying to use the head as well, Oliphant. Seconds out. Oliphant, who came, by the way, into the ring tonight as a late substitute for Steffi Bull, who gave Dean Pithy a pretty good fight. 
few months back. Economic, find the right punches. He just takes it a little too long to react, Everett. I think he's got to be quicker between his combinations. Better from Everett with the jab. Solid jab that he's been landing in this round. Not much coming back from the South African at the moment. I think these heavier shots are definitely shake him up. He's feeling the power of Richard Everett. And the jabs from Everett were good there, really knocking Olafen off balance, not allowing him to get set to throw his own punches. Noticeably, Oliphan having to stagger two steps back when he took that jab as well. He looks unsteady on his feet now, and he he's does. casting glasses to the corner. There was a sign there, the legs, the knees just seemed to dip from Oliphan there, as if he'd just lost some strength. He did again with that right hand. That next right looked low, he's almost down here, he is down. He was on his way down, and then he got a left hand for good measure as well. He's up with a count at about eight and a half, Oliphant, but looks pretty spent here. In the seventh round, which is new territory for Everett, the gun shield, as if he didn't have enough problems, came out again. And there are one or two distress signals, or more than one or two now, from Zakuzi, Oliphant and Everett. Could he force the stoppage? Well, Oliphant's certainly unsteady on his legs. This really, I think Everett just has to bide his time, look for the, the right sort of punches. He could stop his man. He's very tired now, Oliphant. A new gum shield would be a handy 28th birthday present for him. I think that time he just slipped. Yes, he slipped, almost went into a, a split there. But I think that's a sign of how weak his legs are as well, that he did go over like that. Yes, for lots of periods during the round, his legs were, were all over, they were, his knees were dipping. Suddenly the, the strength seems to have gone out of Oliphant. I think they're going to call it off the corner. No more, it's over. Everett has his 13th straight win and his 11th by stoppage. The corner have pulled Zakuzi Oliphant out of the fight. He had nothing left to give, and I think that was a compassionate decision by the corner men, because only one thing was going to happen, and that was that uh, Oliphant was going to take a lot more punishment. Yes, the strength had gone, you see the legs dipping. He was already on his way down to the floor there. The final left hook was just for good measure, but really the, the strength was just drained from him there. There's where his legs just stretched apart there. A little slip, but I think no strength in him. Well, Oliphant, I think, was a, a useful, but not much more than that opponent. Ever solid display, but still things to work on. Gentlemen, the, the corner of the tab, Kisuchi Oliphant at the end of the seventh round. Will you please Welcome your winner, a new IBO Intercontinental Fellowship Champion, Richard Tiger Evans. Well, it's uh, another win for him. Keep on winning. Tommy Gilmore's happy. What did you think, Glenn? Good? Yes, I thought it was a, a decent performance from Everett. He's a gradual wearing down. He didn't really find his rhythm for a little bit, but he got the job done. Richie Richie. Gentlemen, 
I will ask you to welcome into the ring to defend the Intercontinental Championship belt, Supervisor Mr. Gerard Paxton Willard. So that's the belt. It doesn't mean uh, a can of beans, quite honestly, but it'll make Everett feel better. There are much more prestigious belts to go for than that, and maybe he can think in terms of the British title maybe a year or so down the road. Richard, your first title, your first major championship. Wasn't an easy fight, though. No, it was a tough get, weren't it? But I needed the rounds. The rounds were more experienced to me than any of my fights. I needed them rounds severely. The last, I think, six fights went in two rounds at the most, so I needed them rounds. Now, what was all this business going on about the gum shell? That must have been very unsettling for you. Couldn't get into a rhythm. It was with some of that I've learned. You know, I've been in, in the gym with experienced lads. I've suffered with Paul Jones and Danny Gary Lane. They've, they've given me more experience than I really needed, so I know how to handle it. Just he was biting me as well, though. I didn't like that. I felt like biting him. I thought Tigers were supposed to bite, not him. Was there a, a moment in the fight that you sensed he had gone because he, he was spent at the end? Yeah, every time I caught him the left hook, he had gone, but he was a tough lad, and I, I rushed him. I've still got loads more experience to come, but I need another 12 minutes yet, and I'll be the world-class fighter. Well, Barry Hearn, the manager, another match from Fighter, another title. You must be delighted. I think this is the best prospect I've ever seen, you know. I mean, it's easy to, to heap superlatives. This was a world-class performance, and I have to tell you now, and people will say, you know, is he talking just because he's the promoter or the manager? If this boy hits Nazim Hamid, he's gone. Listen, don't worry about what I'm telling you now, because you might as well go down to bookmakers and go down tomorrow. This young man will be a legend in the featherweight division. Nazim Hamid, he's not even in the game. This is a really quality, quality fighter. And if you didn't know, Barry Hearn is interested in the development of his career. But seriously, <laughs> I, I thought... I thought Everett actually was far more realistic, the fighter himself. Yeah, the kid is realistic. He... There's no doubt he's a very exciting uh, addition to the featherweight division. Colourful, banger, a little bit of a plot, very powerful and strong. There's no doubt about it. The gloves didn't suit him either. They're big and bulbous gloves. The, if you had the raised gloves on, you'd have got that guy out of there much quicker. But, you know, that's not get carried away. It's, it's, it, this is the, an era of where people exaggerate and hyperbole. Barry is, is the king of hyperbole, and <laughs> he'll, he'll admit that himself. <laughs> it, let's be honest about it. The kids are very tough puncher and in a, in a tough division but he's got a long way to go.